Welcome back to Inorganic Chemistry. In our prior lecture, we learned about orbital potential energies to help us make molecular orbitals. In this lecture, we'll learn about hybridization and complete the molecular orbital energy level diagram for carbon monoxide. Again, if we look at our carbon, we have 2pz valence atomic orbital and a 2s valence atomic orbital that have the same symmetry in this point group, similar energy, so that means we can combine them to make hybrid atomic orbitals. And they're going to have the same uh, symmetry and the same energy level. So if we take this P and add it to this S, on uh, this side we'll have positive overlap, on this side we'll have negative overlap, so we end up with an orbital that would look like this when we add it one way. And then if we subtract it, we would end up, again, with, during linear combinations, end up with this orbital here. Okay, so we now have two orbitals. They have these shapes or a hybrid between these two orbitals. They have the same energy levels, and they are have the same sigma plus symmetry. And we call this, we took 1s and we combined it with 1p, so this, these would be uh, sp hybrid orbitals. So now we can use this tool, hybridization, to create the molecular orbital energy level diagram for carbon monoxide. So again, energy is going up here. Carbon atom on the left, oxygen atom on the right side of the diagram. So at about negative 11, Electron volts, we'll have our 2p's from our carbon, negative 19 electron volts, we have the 2s from the carbon, around negative 16 electron volts, uh, we have the 2p's on the oxygen, and then way down here, negative 32 electron volts, we have the 2s on the oxygen. And we have our symmetry labels for our atomic orbitals that we're going to combine, um, sigma and pi. Okay, now let's make our hybrid, sp hybrids here. So they're going to be intermediate energy, and they'll both have the sigma symmetry. Now let's overlap the atomic orbitals to make our molecular orbitals. We said this is too different in energy. It's even more different than that. So this 2s on the oxygen remains pretty much unchanged when we make the molecular orbital. These sigmas are going to then combine with this sigma on the, the pz of the oxygen. So we have 1, 2, 3 molecular orbitals, so we can make one bonding, one non-bonding, and one anti-bonding from this sigma here. And then we have the pi that transform together to make two bonding and two Antibonding. So we have the relative energy levels of our molecular orbitals. Uh, let's add the symmetry labels. We know this is the sigma non-bonding from the oxygen. See, it doesn't, it didn't, it didn't bond on this side. Okay. This is sigma bonding from the sp hybrid. This is the pi bonding. This is another sigma non-bonding, pi antibonding, and sigma antibonding. Now, where are our electrons? So carbon has one, two, three, four valence electrons. The oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. That's a total of ten valence electrons. We start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you can figure out the bond order for this molecule. And um, we're done with this orbital energy level diagram. Next, we will do uh, polyatomic molecules. Yeah.